Hello. In this video, we're going to look at using the ADS data display to uh, carry out S-parameter processing. Um, the data display example here is set up to carry out some common tasks related to working with S matrices. Uh, we're going to look at those uh, tasks and then look at an application example. The first task we're going to look at, uh, part one here, is changing the number of frequency points and the start or stop frequencies, which is very useful if you want to cut down on, on uh, uh, the amount of data that you have or display just a specific frequency range uh, without having to do things like editing plot axes and so on. The second one we're going to look at is creating a submatrix of the original S parameters. That's something that's useful, again, if you want to cut down on the amount of data you're processing. Uh, and perhaps you don't need to show or plot all of the different terms that were in the matrix that you had originally. And thirdly, we're going to take uh, a look at the S parameters and break them down into three components, the return loss uh, terms, the through terms, and the isolation terms. Uh, and that's really very useful if you have a problem specifically relating to one of those things uniquely, uh, and you can then have much clearer plots and a much better idea of what's going on. And in the fourth uh, part, we're going to just quickly look at an application example, taking the isolation terms from part three and, uh, and, and working with that to identify some traces that exceed a specification. So let's first start with the frequency uh, manipulation. So in this particular uh, um, page of the data display, you'll see we're looking at the frequency uh, axis in particular. If you look at this first part here, this is the input information from the original S matrix. It talks about the minimum frequency, the maximum frequency, and the number of points. And again, you can look at the what function uh, of that data, and that will tell you what you have there. So again, uh, a frequency, uh, uh, swept variable, 511 points, and then a matrix of 50 by 50. So this is a very big matrix uh, for most applications. Now what we can do here, uh, first of all, is we can go in and we can uh, alter the start and stop frequencies. And how do we do that? Well, here in this particular equation under find index, you're able to find an index for any given frequency. So here I'm saying zero hertz, which is actually the same as the, the minimum frequency in the original data. And here 15 gigahertz, which is the same as the maximum frequency in the original data. And those two uh, equations will generate index numbers, which can then be used in, in an equation here, which will allow us to specify the start and stop index. Now in the middle, you'll see this frequency downsample term. This is where we can go in and we can actually set a downsampling uh, number. What will that will do is it will say start with index 1, and if in this case it's 10, the next index will be 11, and then uh, 21, and so on. So that's uh, a way to downsample. Again, if you have a large number of frequency points here, we had 511, uh, and now you'll see with the downsample we only have 52. So this, uh, this indexing uh, is a very powerful way to work with any kind of data in ADS, but here we're using it specifically with S matrices. So this is the output of that particular example, um, 52 frequency points, but the same number of S, S matrix terms. If you look down here, you can see that we have a way to visually check. So this is a, a, a simple set of sliders that we can look at the down sample, the original data, and see whether or not, for example, we've done anything which would actually cause problems with the, uh, the information that we have. So I can just go in here and I can choose any particular term of interest saying, you know, I'm looking at here at the curves and, and the data fitting here. And we can see that in this particular case, the down sampling hasn't done any, any problem and that working with 52 frequency points for at least most of these uh, traces is fine. So that's down sampling in frequency. Um, a lot of the techniques you see here are like this automatic updating of the S, uh, S ordinates in this little display. Um, we can cover those later. Um, and it, if you get the, uh, the uh, archive of this particular data display, all of this will be available to you. So let's now go to defining a submatrix, part two. So what are we going to do here? We're going to take that uh, original uh, matrix. In this case, we're going to take the downsampled matrix that we generated in the previous uh, page. And we're going to say, let's get to a submatrix of that. Now, you remember it had 50 by 50. Well, what I'm doing here is I'm using uh, a little expression here to define uh, uh, um, the, the size of the submatrix here, starting at index 1 and finishing at 22 in this particular case. Um, there's a little bit of checking that I do here. Um, you can look at that at a later time. But you'll see now that 
I get this new matrix called uh, S sub for S sub matrix that's processed on S dan with a minimum and maximum ordinates for the S. And now you can see that the, the watt of this matrix is now only 22 by 22 instead of 50 by 50. So I've literally pulled out a set of data uh, and you can use this in many, many different ways. Um, one other thing I'm doing here while I'm on this page is I'm actually taking, uh, taking that information on the size of that matrix and generating an identity matrix. Uh, and I'll show you uh, in a moment where that's used. But it's a very useful tool uh, as it uh, can help you identify the return loss terms. So those are two things, the frequency dance sizing and now we've got a sub matrix of the S parameters. So let's take those into another plot We'll look at them here. And this is kind of a storyboard for how you can break down S matrices into various uh, different parts. So the original S matrix, it's, you know, if you plot just the DB of it, it's a great jumble of traces. It's very hard to see or identify what is what uh, and, and get at those things. Now, here's an interesting thing. If you take that matrix and you multiply it by its identity using the dot product, uh, you can use dot math inside of ADS. Um, you'll find that that leading diagonal of ones uh, and everything else is set to zero gives you just the return loss terms. And here you can see pulled out of uh, this original matrix just those return loss terms. Now that's an interesting thing to be able to do because now I can do some further math. I can subtract those return loss terms from the original matrix and that's what I do in the third step. So now we have a matrix here that only has the isolation terms and the through terms. So uh, if I want to really split this up now, I, I've got to find a way to pull out the, the through terms uh, I'm going to work with. So what I'm using here is a function inside of ADS called the DD underscore threshold that allows you to take in that data, specify a, 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 a specification here like minimum or maximum, um, a, a unit for what you're going to work with, uh, an operation, in this case greater than, minus 50, in this case we're looking for something greater than minus 50 dB, uh, and then we're going to do it over a frequency range. Now what I'm doing here is I'm actually looking at the DC intercept, that's the easiest way to look at it. It's, it's a common thing with through terms that they do have a DC connection, so that any, any, any term in the matrix that actually intercepts the, uh, the, uh, the, the axis at zero hertz um, and at, at a non-zero uh, at a non-zero point, that typically will be a through term. I mean, if you have AC coupled, there are other ways to work with this. You can look at some other part of the the spec. But in any case, that's one easy way to actually say, just give me the the through terms, and that's what we've identified here with this uh, with this function and the new matrix S through. So if, now that I've done that, if I subtract S through from this one here, which has the isolation and through, I'm left simply with the isolation terms uh, just by doing a simple subtraction. So that's a great way if you're looking to work with isolation terms, and we're going to do that uh, in a moment, um, you know, how to bring out just those terms from the whole matrix. And just to, to show you how this, this looks when you put them all back together, uh, you'll see this, this plot here. And it's actually the same as this plot here, except it's now very much more easy to understand which traces are which. So let's go on to the example in part four. So here we have uh, an application example, I'm going to call it, where I want to, to look for isolation terms that are failing a spec uh, that I set up over a certain frequency band. So again, um, here is that isolation matrix from the previous example. I set up here some sliders that allow me to zoom uh, across different frequencies. Um, Again, very easy to do, and that's part of the techniques included, and you'll see how to do that if you uh, download the example file. Uh, and then you can pull out just that information over this frequency range, and you can see that the plot uh, automatically updates to whatever frequency range I set. So having done that, I then say, well, what's my spec going to be? So I'm going to say, if, if, a, if a, a response over that range is greater than or equal to minus 15, I'm going to say that's failed. How can I do that? Well, I can again use the DD threshold uh, function, uh, use it a slightly different way than before. And you can, you can see here I'm using um, the frequency, uh, the independent of the two markers, M1 and M2, to set the frequency range. Um, again, you can see more detail with, with the example files when you download them. 
but here you can see that I put a marker uh, on here which is called trace max and I can move that marker around um, it'll find on any trace that I drop it on it will find the maximum uh, in this particular frequency band so you can see how it's doing that so if I again leave it up here on this trace you can down here in the marker you can see that it's actually giving me the information that I, I would want it's telling me that uh, that's frequency here in the band um, the isolation is only minus 11 which is clearly a failure uh, it's term s73 and if I have naming information available I can then go ahead and actually have it tell me this is you know in this case it's a, a, a crosstalk if you like isolation between uh, DQ0 and DQS uh, looking uh, from uh, the uh, BGA end of, of a particular design, uh, particular board. And just for context, I've, I've used that trace marker and the fact it's highlighting its trace to show you that trace in the context of all the isolation terms. And you can see here clearly what we're looking at. And again, this is just the same thing, but over the selected data here uh, that we have. So that's, a, that's an application example where we've used all of the techniques that I showed up to now to, to get at a, a useful, useful result. So um, I'll go on now and explain just quickly the other parts of this particular example so that when you get it, you know what you're going to get. Um, there are a bunch of equations, as you might imagine, that sit behind um, some, of the, some of those plots and displays. Very easy to understand. Um, certainly, um, once you have this, you can sit and look at it and, and uh, uh, obtain the information. And if not, if not, you can contact uh, your, your key site uh, uh, AE and uh, work with them to, to further understand what's been done here. Um, there's some documentation included for the DD threshold function that I used a couple times. And also within this particular uh, example, I've also used a custom expression, a custom AEL function. Uh, this uh, DD find marker matrix data, which is allowing us back uh, back here in the isolation spec to pull off the I and the J of a particular marker and then use that to identify data and identify a trace. So that's really it for this particular uh, data display example for processing S matrices. Um, we've covered all of the, the points I showed here. Um, again, if you have any questions, please contact your local uh, Keysight applications engineer for ADS. Uh, and with that, um, have a great day.